Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and my son last night got hit. Two things were, that were first happened for my eight-year-old last night in his baseball game. He, this is his first uh, season playing um, kid pitch, where the kids are actually pitching to each other. And two things happened to him that have never happened to him before in baseball. The first is that he got hit by a pitch. He did not cry. He ran straight to first and shook it off. I was proud of him for that. And also, he got his first hit off of live pitching in a game last night. And so, I was proud of him for that, too. He hit, he got one single, and he also hit a ball that was a ground out to first. So, he was one for two, in essence. And so, that's a 500 batting average for an eight-year-old. Not bad. Okay, I wanted to start with this um, from Philip J. He replied to one of my threads, and he says, it's not Liechtenstein, but even better. Swiss law reforms make crypto respectable. Um, this is a, an article. I mean, we're seeing it now. You're, you're, you're seeing the regulatory certainty being laid out. Yesterday, we covered the EU. We've got it from the United States. Everybody is now getting everything. Um, it's all coming out right now. We're watching it. <laughs> you're watching it. It's, coming, it's happening right around you. And at some point... Everything is going to change because once the final track is laid from a regulatory perspective, it is game on. It's on like Donkey Kong. Uh, this is in Switzerland. Bitcoin used to be something of a dirty word associated with crime and money laundering. Switzerland has now amended its legal code to welcome the cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology into the mainstream. They call this the Blockchain Act. Uh, I'm not going to go into the dirty details. I think you get it. Um, I love Switzerland, by the way. I went there when I was a young man, and um, it's a great place. The mountains are an amazing thing to look at. Um, then there was this from Mr. Blockchain, who is an attorney, a sports... I was looking at his uh, thing here today. Attorney, sports agent, entrepreneur, serenity seeker, king, sports and digital asset enthusiast. I like his uh, description of himself there. <laughs> Um, okay, so anyway, he sent me this, and this was a tweet from Jacinto Mendez, Bitstamp Bank of America Integrations. Now that, my friends, is interesting, and this is what he was, this is what the link was pointing to. Let me see if there's anything else. It says, what is Integ Integramat? Gmail, Google Sheets, Gmail, uh, Dropbox, Archives, um, you know, I haven't even watched the video, but let's watch the video. Integramat is a powerful tool for automating processes you're doing manually. Integramat will connect apps, services, and smart devices into automated scenarios and will do the work for you. You can do most of the automations without the need of any programming. You can create an easy scenario, like if something happens, do some action. And advanced users can use Integromat for creating complex and very advanced integrations. We have support for many apps and services, and we are frequently adding new ones. Integromat can also work with smart devices and other types of external hardware. We have almost unlimited possibilities. Let Integromat awesome. work for you. Register your free account today at W. All right, how do I get rid of this? Okay, <clears throat> so anyway, Bank of America and Bitstamp. What's significant is Bitstamp um, is a, <clears throat> is an ODL. Uh, I, I believe that's one of Ripple's. I know it's one of Ripple's ODL partners. I'm pretty. I'm pretty positive. I don't think I'm going crazy here and saying that. Um, but Bitstamp has been one of the. It was one of the first. I think it may have been the first exchange. Um, and. I actually in the last bull run I had my XRP on Bitstamp because I remember staring at that app every waking minute <laughs> while things were going crazy. Um but this is a huge deal right here because something is going on and it's not just the announcement itself, it's who it is that put that out. 
This guy right here, you know how I know this guy? Is because when I went to Swell in 2019, I met that guy right there. I believe I was in the, in the airport. It wasn't in Singapore. It was one of the hops. Um, I can't remember. Maybe it was, it may have been the San Francisco airport. I, I just don't remember which, I think it was in the San Francisco airport, maybe. But anyway, I met this guy and I didn't realize, I didn't realize that he was in any way involved with Ripple at the time. I later on found that he's somehow involved and I can prove it. Watch this. Look at this picture. Do you remember this picture? That guy right there is that guy. And he was a nice guy. I met him and he was, he was very, very nice guy in the airport, but I had no idea at the time who he was, but apparently he, I'm assuming he's some kind of a, well, let's see what his, let's see what his Twitter handle says here. It says FinTech IOT interledger DLT blockchains. Um, so he's intentionally a little vague. He doesn't tie himself to ripple on his, on his thing, but he obviously knows these guys. David Schwartz is right here. This is the guy you see on Twitter sometime, Nick Bogles. There's Miguel Valles. There's Bob Way. And I'm not sure who these other guys are. I want to say I've seen that guy in a poly sign picture. But anyway, um, it's all connected, folks. It's all connected. These guys aren't coming out talk, saying things like that. They know. Now, a lot of people have wondered if Arthur Brito is in this picture. And that that led me to an old tweet by Cryptopolis. Watch this. Letter, uh, I just happened to stumble upon this and I had not seen it or didn't remember seeing it. Letter from Arthur Brito to the crypto community in 2014. Our purpose is to reinvent the foundation on which global finance is built. My emphasis on global. Um, Arthur Brito, May 22nd, 2014. Check this out. Um, I've been following this thread along with the rest of you today. I wanted to comment on behalf of the Ripple Labs team. Ripple is unique. Um, or as um, or as Naveen Gupta said, Ripple is not an ordinary company. Ripple is unique. It is the only distributed protocol that enables value to move like information moves today. Our vision is for an inclusive value web built by enterprise financial services firms and innovative developers. It greatly improves rather than replaces the incumbent system. Many of you are concerned about what impact these sales will have on the market. What affects XRP price long term is adoption of the protocol and growth of the ecosystem. Now remember, Glenn Hutchins said the, it, the, it's the protocol. The values in the protocol. The prices are a distraction. It's the adoption of the protocol and the growth of the ecosystem is the value of the protocol. Utility increases. So does the value of XRP. The price of XRP doesn't impair the functionality of the Ripple protocol or network. Similarly, the short-term price of XRP does not hinder our ability to execute on the vision. Our company is well-funded. We're not dependent on XRP. <clears throat> A critical ingredient to Ripple's success is regulatory compliance. We're committed to support and compliant protocol network expect significant developments from us on security and consumer protection features. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've heard and shared your concern about the founders XRP allotment. Prior to today, we've been working on a founders XRP lockup plan. That was what it became the escrow with Chris and I, I are participating, which Chris and I are participating in. You can rest assured that a dumping event like this won't happen from other co-founders. It's heartening to see Ripple's tremendous progress as of late. Um, on, on the enterprise front, there are five Wall Street funds trading on Ripple and the first bank, Fidor, signed on to use Ripple as its real-time settlement infrastructure. The news, along with the tireless efforts of our business development team, has led to very productive conversations with top 20 banks around the world. On the developer front, we've established a dedicated developer relations program and engineering resources to create tools to make building on Ripple easy. On the regulatory front, our compliance and, and risk uh, chiefs have made lots of headway positioning Ripple as a real-time settlement system, solving fundamental deficiencies in finance. It was a big day when VP of the St. Louis Fed, David Andolfato, 
expressed his view that there's room for beneficial coexistence between coexistence between central banks and Ripple. Some of you have asked what Jed's intentions are with his sale. You'll have to ask him. He hasn't been on the operating team for about a year and hasn't been on the board since April. In the near term, our team is focused on building a banking infrastructure on the protocol. It's necessary. It's a necessary f foundational step to enable other types of applications and activity on Ripple, remittance merchant solutions. We're 54 employees strong and continue to hire. Our purpose is to reinvent the foundation on which global finance is built. Your support and, and active involvement in building the value web is mission critical. Thank you, Arthur Brito. What a fascinating letter from 2014. Now let's go back to this right down here. Um, it was a big day when VP of St. Louis Fed, David Ann Delfado, expressed his view there's room for beneficial coexistence between central banks and Ripple. Well, I went back and found where he said this. Five questions for St. Louis Fed economist David Andelfato, April 9, 2014. This is from Ripple's website. Right down here, can you, um, not that one, um, how exactly do you see the Fed coexisting with these technologies? The Fed manages the supply of the greatest currency on the planet, King Dollar. I know that many people have criticized the Fed for many things, and indeed, no institution is perfect. But over the last 30 years, the U.S. inflation rate has been low, still positive and stable. As long as the Fed continues to manage its currency in a responsible manner, it will remain dominant. Thus, I do not see any cryptocurrency replacing, displacing the USD anytime soon, though the fact that the threat exists is a good thing in my view. It will help discipline central bank behavior should a central bank stray too far from its price stability mandate. I do see a number of these currencies existing side by side with the USD, much in the same way we see hundreds of local currencies in circulation today. So if the USD remains king, the main point of entry for this virtual currency revolution would seem to me to be what it can offer in a way of processing payments, especially at the retail level. This is why I am relatively bullish on the Ripple protocol. So in short, we have the Fed doing what it does. We have central banks doing what they do, financing investments. We have Ripple-like services taking over a big part of the payments business from banks. And we have Bitcoin-like cryptocurrencies financing a relatively small fraction of transactions. Something like that, though, I will have to think about much more carefully. So the Fed, these guys knew, they knew that this was going to be the bridge way back when. I'm telling you, they knew this was a plan. I thought it for a long time. I didn't think it when I first got to this space, but it was a plan, folks. Now... I'm going to show you something at the end of this video that should blow some of your minds, by the way. Um, okay, well, XRP Yo-Yo tweeted this out, which I thought was interesting. Um, Deutsche, Be Deutsche Bundesbank, follow the live stream, start, live stream starting at 10 a.m. Uh, with this guy and this guy and this guy. Discuss digitalization of the financial and banking sector at the virtual autumn conference. You see, it's happening, folks. They're, they're all in motion now. Crypto D sent me something interesting. Um, this is payid.cloud. Thanks for waiting, everybody. And he was, he was, he sent this to me because they've got a satellite on their thing and they're like, it says we've launched the payid cloud interface is now online. Now what I, here's what I think this is. Don't get this confused with, um, with this. This is payid. This is the payid that you all know. Um, that Ripple's involved with the universal payment identifier. What I believe this is, I believe this is someone who has had a bright idea to start a company and sell um, domain names around this at uh, cloud.cloud or something. Uh, I think they're selling domain names with um, this string in it. So you could get like your name, dollar sign, dot cloud or something to that effect. I think that's what this is. But you can go check it out for yourself. Their um, Twitter handle is at CloudPayID. But I still say, look, nodes are going to be on satellites, folks. I'll keep telling you that. Nodes are going to be on satellites. And I think it's um, this, I think XRP and XLM, this has been part of the plan from the very beginning. I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, okay. Now, um, 
XRP Crypto Wolf, the office of the comptroller of the currency, Brian Brooks, moved to license payments firms at the federal level, could boost mainstream cryptocurrency adoption by allowing uh, crypto payments firms to obtain approval to operate across multiple states. That is big time. You know what Brian Brooks is doing is big time. Now, <clears throat> let's look at this. I think you're going to find this interesting. Digital Asset UK told, re reminded me or, or pointed me to this. Um, what this right here, uh, Anthony Pompliano is going to, um, interview Jim Cramer. Uh, he, he said he just convinced Jim Cramer to buy Bitcoin, but he was doing an interview with Jim Cramer. Reply to this tweet with your best meme or gift to welcome the world's newest Bitcoiner. Now here's the deal, folks. Jim Cramer is, is the perfect representation in, in, as to what, what digital assets represents to me honesty and transparency in the financial world. I believe that the traditional financial media, and it's also the reason I'm here. It's the reason YouTubers are telling you the truth about digital assets and it's not coming and hasn't been coming from traditional financial media. They're, they're acting like they're scratching their head and they just can't figure out this Bitcoin thing. Meanwhile, they're in the pockets of people or people are in their pockets. And that has been the truth for a long time. And I'm going to prove it to you right here for those of you that haven't seen it. Okay. But this Miguel Valles hits it right here in, in the clip I showed you yesterday. There's a part of what he's saying here. This can't be manipulated. Everything in finance can be manipulated, but digital assets are the first thing that mathematically cannot be manipulated. Jim Cramer has been selling things that can be manipulated and he's been part of the manipulation and I will prove it to you today. But first I want you to hear this reminder from Miguel Valles about what it is, why these digital assets are so special and why we're here. Because we're tired of being, I'll say it, we're tired of being shit on by the traditional financial people. And that's the truth. Okay. I don't even cuss on this channel, but I'm sorry. And sorry if you heard that. We've been, we have been crapped on for years by the traditional financial people. They, I don't care what they tell you. All these companies that are these big financial firms, they have been doing what I call legal insider trading. They're the ones that make the laws and they've been able to legally insider trade and they don't go to jail. Look at the financial crisis. Who went to jail? Nobody. Okay. Listen to what Miguel Valles says here. And then I'm going to show you some clips from Jim Cramer and let you see who these people really are and why this is such a huge thing for you and for me. Listen to what Miguel says here. That's an incredible amount of progress in and of itself. I think it's inevitable that eventually we will get to a point where Central banks and regular banks hold these things on reserve the same way they hold any asset, right? Um, but the, here's an asset that it, you know is immutable. You can move it around easily um, and is 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 non-debasable, right? I mean, you can basically do almost anything else. You can dig more things out of the ground. You know, you can you can certainly print more money. You can borrow more money. You can do a lot of these things. You can issue more stock. I mean. You can almost even commodities to a certain level aren't the base. So I think it's it's a it's a really interesting kind of mental um, you know kind of mental construct. Exactly, he just laid it out. Everything in finance, pretty much, except a few things. Let me tell you the ones in my opinion that are the the the, the greatest investments. Now, look, gold and silver. If if they start mining on asteroids like the Winklevoss twins said, then that's one thing. That's that's something you, we can't even get our minds around right now, but who knows? Maybe it'll happen down the road. But paid for real estate, folks, paid for real estate. There's not anything they're doing about that. The only thing, the only way that could be harmed is, is by taxation. If they tax you and you can't pony up because there's no liquidity or something, but paid for real estate, digital assets that mathematically can't be increased in number, right? XRP. Bitcoin would be included in that. Okay. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Now let's, I'm, I'm going to let you hear from, from the people, from the manipulators. Okay. Uh, first. Okay. So pump is interviewing Jim Cramer. This is Jim Cramer when he's talking about Bitcoin, how this is just totally illegitimate. Watch this. This is 2017. It's not investing. 
<laughs> it has very little to do with investing. It, it has a lot to do with the, actually the poor. And by the way, he's saying all this when Bitcoin was at $1,375. Mechanics of this instrument, because if you're going to do these different, uh, the futures, I mean, they, they can risk, they can tell you how much risk there is. But the fact is, uh, a market does not, this market doesn't produce even more tulips. I and mean, let's say it was no. that analogy. But you can't find supply, so they have to reach until supply is felt. But that's not investment. That's just poor mechanics of an instrument. Right. But this is a mania, is it not? Yes. It but is. We, we could, uh, Joe Kerner was asking me about the whole size of it. And that's a problem. I mean, one of the things you could say about this is it's going to be a uh, a trillion dollar market and, and it's at 250 billion and it has to get to a trillion before people realize, you know what, I've made a huge amount of money and uh, put, you know, bears make money, bulls make money, but hogs get slaughtered. There seems to be no element of piggishness among the buyers. Right. The the level I mentioned earlier, ending the year at two million. All right, I just wanted you to, to, to see that. Now, this is uh, with John Stewart on the Comedy Channel. Um, I can't remember the name, what his show was called. But anyway, this is John Stewart playing old video clips with Jim Cramer on, being interviewed on his show. And I want you to see this because this this is why we're all here, folks. If you really want to, if you really want to sum it up, we've all smelled a rat in traditional finance. I've smelled a rat at least since the financial crisis, and many of you have, have smelled a rat since before then. I believe digital assets are our way of 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 uh, getting our revenge in one way. In one way, this is this is a way to get back what they've taken from us. This is the way I have seen this. Watch this clip, and you will you will see the way the way we've been done for years. This is, remember. Jim Cramer is the, he is the salesman for CNBC. He's the guy that's pitching all of this stuff. And he tells you in this clip what they have done to us over the years and how they've manipulated us into buying things that they wanted us to buy and all of this digital asset. There's a reason that we've had to sit here in a two year plus bear market. And when we knew everything in our gut that this was right, while we saw all of the articles being trotted out, and all the CNBC people shaking their head like they just didn't understand this Bitcoin thing. When it was the only thing, this space, things that they cannot manipulate, it's the only thing that makes real sense out of all of this to me. What doesn't make sense is this stock market that he continues to pump when he knows that the only reason the stock market is going up like crazy is because of the Fed manipulating things and printing money and buying all these assets. He knows it. He's not telling his audience that. Well, listen to what this guy says. You're pretending that you are a dew-eyed innocent. Watch, roll. Uh, I mean, if I may, just, just it, roll 212. Roll 212. No, not 212. Now, you can't foment. That's a violation of... of foment? Yeah. You can't foment. foment. You can't create a yourself an impression that a stock's down. But you do it anyway because the SEC doesn't right. understand it. So, you, I mean, it's that's the only sense that I would say this is illegal. Now, it's, it's what... It, 216. Wait till you see this. Another stock that a lot of people are focused on right now seems to be Apple. Yeah, Apple's it's very important to spread the rumor that um, that both uh, Verizon and Bell and uh, ATT have decided they don't like the phone. Right. That's a very easy one to do because it's also you want to spread the rumor that it's not going to be ready for Macworld. And this is very easy because the people who spread the rumor want that story. And you can claim that it's credible because you spoke to someone at Apple because Apple isn't in, doesn't right, they're not going to comment. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I got to tell you, it, you know, I understand you want to make finance entertaining, but it's not a f game. And I, I, I when I watch that, I get I can't tell you how angry that makes me, because what it says to me is you all know. But they you all know. know. They've always known. Going on. You know, you can draw a straight line from those shenanigans to the stuff that was being pulled at Bear and at AIG and all this derivative market stuff that is this weird Wall Street side bet. But you know, don't you want guys like me who have been in it to show the shenanigans? What else can I do? I mean, last no, night no, no, show... No, 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 I want desperately for that.
But I feel like that's not what we're getting. What we're getting is, listen, you knew what the banks were doing, and yet we're touting it for months and months. The entire network was. You're exactly. And you watch. I hope those of you out there that are listening to me have been strong, because if you've been strong, there's gonna you're gonna see when these guys turn it on and they turn they're gonna turn all of that money and power towards digital assets when they're finally ready to make their money and they, they finally got it all apart. They're going to turn those guns because this game's never going to change. These people are who they are. I don't care who it is. All these, the Goldman Sachs, I've used the example of Warren Buffett during the financial crisis. He buys preferred stock in Goldman Sachs and he's on the phone with the, uh, I believe it was the treasury secretary, Hank Paulson. And, and he, he's on the phone with him and the guy's saying, well, don't worry. Your, your, your investment, we're, we're, we're going to back you here. The federal government is now. That's not insider trading, but but uh, Martha Stewart goes to jail for talking about a stock to her broker. Please, this has been going on for for the, since the beginning of time, and the powerful get away with it because they make the laws. Now, but but this is our chance. That's what I've been saying on this channel for over two years. This is our chance. Okay, all right. I'm done with that rant. Hey, I wanted to show you, I've been telling you about, um, we've, a lot of us out here have been buying these unstoppable domains. This is a new asset class itself. Uh, they're, they're selling these dot crypto domains. This is in the description of every video I did that I do. Um, but I also, I wanted to show you, this is so cool. Unstoppable domains has a feature inside of it where you can lit, once you buy a domain, you can go turn around and put it up for sale. And that's what some of these people have done. I was looking through some of the most viewed domains and I found something cool I wanted to show you. Buy.crypto is available or they're not selling it. You can see if there's a price, they're selling it. We know that sex.crypto sold for like $90,000. Well, I saw business.crypto and that caught my attention because I remembered back when business.com sold, it was, it was like, like set a record, set a record. So I went back and found the article. Business.com sells for $350 million. This is in uh, July of 2007. That's a TechCrunch article. And I saw this and I was looking at it. They're selling a business.crypto for 3,999 Ethereum, which I think is the equivalent of like somewhere in the $1.4 million range or something like that. So anyway, I put a, I put a, I'm going to put a link to, uh, that business dot crypto in the description of this video. If you want to go check it out, um, or if that looks interesting because they've got it, that business dot crypto for sale for 1.4 million and business dot com sold for 350 million. That's crazy. Anyway, check it in the description. I'll put a link directly to it. If you want to go look at it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that business.crypto is for sale. That is, that's pretty wild. Thanks for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, and embarrassed by their friends, family, and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free digital asset investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.